Hello and welcome. This is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary here in Seattle Public Schools. This is our second fifth grade lesson of the week and we are in unit eight of your Making Meaning book. Our unit is all about determining important ideas and summarizing. This week, we're gonna be practicing that skill with the book, A River Ran Wild by Lynn Cherry. Here's a quick summary if you didn't catch our last lesson. The book tells the long history of the Nashua River in New England. First, Native Americans settled there hundreds of years ago, but eventually, Settlers came and drove them out. Then factories opened up and started polluting the river. And the book ends with a campaign led by some descendants of some of the Native Americans to clean up the river through some laws. In this lesson, we're gonna be rereading the first half of the book. And we're gonna make four different stops where you're going to need to write down the most important things that you remember from the section we read. The materials you're gonna need for this lesson are some sticky notes when it comes time for independent daily reading, a pen or a pencil, and you're gonna need a piece of paper divided into four sections for the four stops we're gonna take while we're reading today. Remember, while we're reading, I want you to be thinking about this question. What parts of the story are important for you to understand and remember? Long ago, a river ran wild through a land of towering forests. Bears, moose, and herds of deer, hawks and owls, all made their homes in the peaceful river valley. Peace paused on their long migration and rested on its banks. Beavers, turtles, and schools of fish swam in its clear waters. One day, a group of native people searching for a place to settle, came upon the river valley. From atop the highest mountain, known today as Mount Wachaset, they saw the river nestled in its valley, a silver sliver in the sun. They came down from the mountain, and at the river's edge, they knelt to quench their thirst with its clear water. Pebbles shone up from the bottom. Let us settle by this river, said the chief of the native people. He named the river Nashaway, river with the pebbled bottom. Now we're gonna stop and write down what's important about the part we just read. We're gonna do this first one together. So let's think. What's important about what we just read? Hmm. Well, it seems most important to understand and remember that a long time ago, the river valley was home to many animals and that native people settled along the river. Okay, so I'm gonna write down. Long ago, the river valley was home to many animals. Native people settled along the river. For this stop, you can write exactly what I wrote. As we continue reading now, remember to keep thinking about the question, what parts of the story are important for you to understand and remember? By the Nashaway, Chief Weewa's people built a village. They gathered cattails from the riverbanks to thatch their dwellings. And cattails are tall plants with long fuzzy ends, sort of like a cat's tails. And thatch their dwellings means they built their homes using thin sticks for walls and roofs. They gathered cattails from the riverbanks to thatch their dwellings. In the forest, they set fires to clear brush from the forest floor. In these clearings, they planted corn and squash for eating. They made arrows for hunting and canoes for river travel. When the Indians hunted in the forest or caught salmon in the river,
They killed only what they needed for themselves for food and clothing. They asked all the forest creatures that they killed to please forgive them. The Nashua people saw a rhythm in their lives and in the seasons. The river, land, and forest provided all they needed. Now it's time for stop two, where we're going to ask again, what is important about what we just read? We're going to do this one together as well. So let's think. Hmm. What is important about what we just read? Well, what seems most important to understand and remember is that the native people respected nature and killed only the animals that they needed to survive. Okay, so I'm gonna write down the native people respected nature. They only killed the animals They needed to survive. Since we're doing this one together, you can write down the exact same note that I just did. We're going to keep reading, but this time when we stop, you're going to need to write on your own. Keep thinking about that question. What parts of the story are important for you to understand and remember? The Nashua had lived for generations by the clear, clean, flowing river when one day a pale-skinned trader came with a boatload full of treasures. He brought shiny metal knives, colored beads, and cooking kettles, mirrors, tools, and bolts of bright cloth. His wares seemed like magic. The Nashua welcomed him, traded furs, and soon a trading post was built. And a trading post is a store in the wilderness where people trade food and supplies. The Nashua welcomed him, traded furs, and soon a trading post was built. In the many years that followed, the settlers' village and others like it grew, and the Nashua became the Nashua. The settlers worked together to clear land by cutting down the forests, which they thought were full of danger, wilderness that they would conquer. And wilderness means a wild area with few people living there. Wilderness that they would conquer. They hunted wolves and beaver, killing much more than they needed. Extra pelts, and pelts are animal skins? Extra pelts were sent to England in return for goods and money. The settlers built sawmills, and sawmills are buildings where machines cut logs into lumber. The settlers built sawmills along the river, which the Nashua's current powered, and a current is just flowing water. They built dams, and dams are walls to hold back water and keep it from flowing. They built dams to make the mill ponds that were used to store the water. They cut down the towering forest and floated tree trunks down the river. The logs were cut up into lumber, which was used for building houses. Now we're gonna to turn to a partner. And your partner can be a friend or family member that's right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal. And it can also be an imaginary person you're calling on the phone. But I want you to turn to a partner and tell them what seems to be the most important things to remember and understand about the part of the story we just read. Also, if you speak a language besides English and you'd rather speak in that language, go ahead and tell your partner in whatever language you feel most comfortable. If you don't know what to say, you can ask yourself, what is this part of the story mainly about?
You could also answer the question, if you had to tell what this part is about in one sentence, what would it be? Before you write down in stop three, the most important thing about this section, we're gonna reread it. Now I understand, rereading is not everyone's favorite thing to do, but good readers always reread because there are things you might've missed the first time that you're definitely gonna understand better the second time around. Let's reread now. The Nashua had lived for generations by the clear, clean, flowing river when one day a pale-skinned trader came with a boatload full of treasures. He brought shiny metal knives, colored beads, and cooking kettles, mirrors, tools, and bolts of bright cloth. His wares seemed like magic. The Nashua welcomed him, traded furs, and soon a trading post was built. And a trading post is a store in the wilderness where people trade food and supplies. The Nashua welcomed him, traded furs, and soon a trading post was built. In the many years that followed, the settlers' village and others like it grew, and the Nashua became the Nashua. The settlers worked together to clear land by cutting down the forests, which they thought were full of danger wilderness that they would conquer. And wilderness means a wild area with few people living there. Wilderness that they would conquer. They hunted wolves and beaver, killing much more than they needed. Extra pelts, and pelts are animal skins? Extra pelts were sent to England in return for goods and money. The settlers built sawmills, and sawmills are buildings where machines cut logs into lumber. The settlers built sawmills along the river, which the Nashua's current powered. And a current is just flowing water. They built dams, and dams are walls to hold back water and keep it from flowing. They built dams to make the mill ponds that were used to store the water. They cut down the towering forest and floated tree trunks down the river. The logs were cut up into lumber, which was used for building houses. Now it's your turn. Write what is important about what we just read in stop three. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. You might have said that a white trader came to the Nashua River. And started a trading post. Then lots of settlers came. And started chopping down the forest. We're going to read one more page and you're going to stop and write on your own. Remember the question, what parts of the story are important for you to understand and remember? The settlers built fences for their pastures, plowed the fields, and planted crops. They called the land their own and told the Indians not to trespass. And trespass means to go onto another person's property without their permission. They told the Indians not to trespass. Hunting land disappeared as the settlers cleared the forest. Indian fishing rights vanished as the settlers claimed the river. The Indians' ways were disrupted and they began to fight the settlers. The wars raged for many years, but the Indians' bows and arrows were no match against gunpowder. And so the settlers' rifles drove the Indians from the land. Through a hundred years of fighting, the Nashua was a healthy river, sometimes dammed for grist and sawmills. And we talked about sawmills before. Those are the buildings where they used machines to cut logs into lumber. And here, grist mills are buildings where machines grind grain 
such as corn or wheat. Sometimes the river was dammed for grist and sawmills, but still flowing wild and free. Muskrats, fish, and turtles still swam from bank to bank. Deer still came to drink from the river, and owls, raccoons, and beaver fed there. Turn to your partner again and tell them what seems to be the most important thing to remember and understand about the section we just read. Remember, if you speak a language besides English, you can tell your partner in whatever language you want. If you don't know what to say, you can ask yourself, what is this part of the story mainly about? You could also answer the question, if you had to tell what this part is about in one sentence, what would it be? We're going to reread this section to make sure we didn't miss anything the first time. Let's reread. The settlers built fences for their pastures, plowed the fields, and planted crops. They called the land their own and told the Indians not to trespass. And trespass means to go onto another person's property without their permission. They told the Indians not to trespass. Hunting land disappeared as the settlers cleared the forest. Indian fishing rights vanished as the settlers claimed the river. The Indians' ways were disrupted and they began to fight the settlers. The wars raged for many years, but the Indians' bows and arrows were no match against gunpowder. And so the settlers' rifles drove the Indians from the land. Through a hundred years of fighting, the Nashua was a healthy river, sometimes dammed for grist and sawmills. And we talked about sawmills before. Those are the buildings where they used machines to cut logs into lumber. And here, grist mills are buildings where machines grind grain, such as corn or wheat. Sometimes the river was dammed for grist and sawmills, but still flowing wild and free. Muskrats, fish, and turtles still swam from bank to bank. Deer still came to drink from the river, and owls, raccoons, and beaver fed there. It's your turn again. Go ahead and write what is important about what we just read in stop four. Remember, you can always pause the video or write this later if you run out of time. You might have wrote something like this. The settlers kicked the Native Americans off their land. So a war started. But the settlers won. But still, the Nashua River was mostly healthy. Now it's time for your independent daily reading. You need to get a fiction or a narrative nonfiction book and make sure you read for at least 30 minutes. Today, we're gonna to be looking at our reading comprehension strategies. These are strategies that good readers use to help them better understand books when they might get confusing. While you read today, you're gonna to have some sticky notes and you are going to put a sticky note in the book and write down which reading comprehension strategies you're using to help you better understand what's happening in the book. The reading comprehension strategies you've used so far this year are using text features, questioning, recognizing story elements, making inferences, visualizing, 
in analyzing how texts are organized. I'm going to model what you need to do during IDR today with this book, The Turtle of Oman by Naomi Shihab Nye. The book is about a boy growing up in the country of Oman who's really, really nervous about having to move to the United States. Here's an example. If I were reading this first chapter here, earplugs. Arif Al Amri stared at the Muscat International Airport security guards. They looked very serious in their brown uniforms, checking tickets, waving travelers forward. Hmm, so right now, I'm using the reading comprehension strategy of visualizing. So I can take a sticky note and put it on my page, and I would just write down visualizing. I'm making a picture in my head of what these security guards look like at the airport. Okay. Arif wished he had planned to give his dad a tiny turtle to carry in his pocket. The turtle might hide his head and pretend to be a stone when the plane took off, and stick his head out of the shell again when the plane was flying. His dad could feed him a piece of lettuce from his sandwich. Hmm. So I'm going to use another reading comprehension strategy here. And I'm going to use questioning because I'm a little bit confused. I'm going to say, why is a reef into turtles? I'm also going to ask, where is he going with his dad? Now I can monitor to see if they answer these questions and that's going to better help me understand the story. This is what you need to do while you're reading your IDR book today. All right, let's get reading. We will see you next time. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website.